Gene Bergancini. Mike Sturm on the bass. <laughs> Ike just reminded me that this is his job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ike. But I, I don't want to leave anyone out, so this is Alan Mednard on the drums. <laughs> and Gene on phone. <laughs> He's talking on the phone while he was doing that. I don't know how. Um, thank you all so much for being here, and it's it's great to see you. There it is. <laughs> uh, we're. Uh, I just wanted to say something before we play our first piece. Uh, my name's Chris Dingman, and uh, this is uh, we're going to be playing trio music and also some um, liturgical settings by Ike, and you'll hear from some nice, very special guest vocalists. And uh, I'm not going to give everything away. Um, so I just wanted to say something before we play. And uh, t today being Father's Day, um, I want to make this performance a really special dedication to my father, Joe Dingman. Um, I love you, Dad. And uh, I know he's watching online. So I um, hope you're enjoying the, the show. And... Uh, We'll look forward to playing. Our first piece is going to be called, oh, before I talk about the piece, this project is, um, we're in the midst of making an album, and the album is called Embrace. So um, it's ex exploring that concept in a lot of different ways. And so this first piece is called The Opening, followed directly by a piece called Mudita, which means sympathetic joy. Hope you enjoy. Thanks.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Peter's for Jazz Vespers. Vespers is, tip, is a service of prayer that is said at the close of the day as the sun sets. Well, the sun is certainly not setting, but we can uh, have the same spirit of Vespers, which is really to look back over the course of the day and say thanks, thanks to God, thanks to all of the people who have been with us during the day. And that's what we do every week here uh, at Jazz Vespers on Sunday. So uh, thanks to all of those gathered here, thanks to our musicians who uh, prepare the music, thanks to everyone who makes this and our lives possible. In that spirit, we hope that you will sing with us this night, pray with us this night, and leave this place uh, fulfilled, perhaps a little bit more, uh, to go on to whatever you're going to do the rest of the night. Um, we invite you to stand, I think, and sing the psalm, yeah?
shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is how upright the Lord is my rock in whom there is no injustice my rock my rock in whom there is no injustice It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. It's a good thing to sing praises to the Lord. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. It's a good thing to sing praises to the Lord. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to the Lord. It's a good thing. Creator God, you have planted your word in our hearts that you might gather the harvest of justice. Root us so firmly in your love that we may always flourish, yielding the fruits of the Spirit from youth to old age, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under its every kind of bird will live. In the shadow of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. A reading from Mark. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. He spoke to them in parables. They didn't understand it, so they needed explanation, and then they understood. That only happens twice in Mark's gospel, and we heard them both tonight. Jesus tell, telling a parable that says the kingdom of God is like somebody goes out, plants some seeds, and then goes to sleep, and then is surprised a couple of months later when they come back and it's grown up. The kingdom of God is like that little mustard seed put into the ground that all of a sudden becomes the greatest of all shrubs. So we could stop and say, turn to your neighbor and say, what did Jesus mean by all of that? And if you would say, we're not quite certain, that would be a really good answer. What does Jesus mean by saying the kingdom of God is like somebody who does something and then goes to sleep and then just hopes to God that maybe it does the right thing. What exactly does Jesus mean by saying this little mustard seed becomes, uh, with very little work, the greatest shrub uh, on the, known to at least that part of the world at the time? What does Jesus mean by saying this is the kingdom of God? It gets even more confusing than this. Because if you look, if you turn the page, 
the very thing that happens next is that Jesus gets in a boat and goes out on a lake and falls asleep. He becomes that parable himself. And a great big storm rises up around the disciples, and they are just terrified. They don't know what to do. And there's Jesus, just in the boat, asleep, embodying the very parable he just taught about. And they wake him up, and he calms the storm. So what then? If we look at this set of parables taken out into real life in Mark's gospel, does this have to do with the kingdom of God? It's worth remembering what kingdom, what empire, the people for whom St. Mark's gospel was first written, what they were living with. They were living under occupation of of Rome, which for all the talk about the peace of Rome really meant that the army came marching into town and imposed rule, their rule of law, which was not about what we were singing about with the psalm, a rule of mercy and justice and righteousness or anything to do with praise, but it was all a rule that said everything about who we are and what we are and where we live had nothing to do with us or with our community, but it all had to do with the emperor back in Rome and his, and it always was a his, power. And it was worse than that. Because we pretty much know from studying Mark's gospel as you start to, to read it and you read below the surface, what you realize when you read the gospel and then you also study some history is that In about 70 of the common era, that Roman occupying force got hmm, rallied up. And they called in enforcements. And an even greater force came into Jerusalem, ransacked the place, leveled it to the ground. If you go visit Jerusalem, you see the remnants of the temple. You see it on television, people praying at the Western Wall. That's all that's left. So what really the people for whom Jesus talks about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed or a kingdom of God being like the person who just goes to sleep and hopes to God that all will be okay. That's written, that story is told in the midst of about as bad as it could get in life. And yet, Jesus says somehow, this is the kingdom of God. How is it the kingdom of God? Well, some people have thought that the kingdom of God becomes its own empire. The church set this up. Constantinople, on. Some people think that the kingdom of God is about some nation, perhaps even our nation, becoming a reflection uh, or actually becoming a... uh, its own empire in our own time where you line up exactly as the person at the top says you should. Some have thought that the kingdom of God is sort of anarchy. Overthrow the government and we'll have what's left with the rest of us. That, dear friends, is not at all what is meant by the kingdom of God. In order to understand what Jesus is talking about, of what is meant by the kingdom of God, you have to ask the important question. What in the world happens to the guy who proclaims the kingdom of God? Fast forward to the end of that story and you find someone who is crucified by that Roman Empire, who is made fun of, who's humiliated, who's dragged out of town and crucified on a garbage heap and said by the powers that be of the world, you do not matter. That one is the one who stands in the midst, our midst, and says, you are the kingdom of God. It's kind of almost absurd. You can't possibly imagine that that would be how the kingdom of God would come to be. My life changed when I figured out that my job in in the world 
is not to somehow create any of those versions of the kingdom of God I named, but instead to embody as much as I can in my day and, and, and every day of my life, a life like Jesus, who when faced with the powers of the world, a power of the world that would even go and crucify him said, you know what, you don't matter. To be an embody like Jesus when faced with the powers of the world that says, well, if only you had, oh, I don't know, uh, worshipped Caesar, then you might save your life. My life changed when I figured out that my role in life is to look to the most vulnerable in our midst and stand with those people and to insist that the powers and principalities of the world do the same. That, dear friends, is the kingdom of God. It's not a replacement. It's not a competition. It's not even life within something. It's something dramatically different. It's us coming together and saying we are going to live always concerned for the most vulnerable, we are going to live always thinking about the people who have the least. Because how in the world could we even dare to embody this thing that we call the body of Christ if we don't do that with the least of these in the midst of us? The kingdom of God. Well, I suppose in that way, it's like the person who went to sleep and it was okay. I suppose in that way, the kingdom of God is like that little mustard seed that became the greatest shrub the world had ever seen. What perhaps Jesus is trying to say to us is that in the midst of all that goes around us that might upset us, the one thing we should never have or never worry about is that we will not succeed we should not fear failure. We, shall not, we should not look at these powers with incredible anxiety, but to look at them instead with faith. Because if a mustard seed could be planted in the ground and grow like that, if a bunch of seeds scattered on some crazy, unprepared soil could grow, how much more, how much amazing things can God do with all of us? As I look around, I see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and each and every single one of us gathered here this night who seek, who pray for, and who work for God's peace and justice and mercy so that with the psalmists we can say thanks. looked with favor on your 
greatness of the as you're able. Let us pray for God's people in every place, responding with the words, Lord, have mercy. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishops and all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest. Rejoicing in the communion of Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints. We commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to God's tender care. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Today, our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. piece that we we played a number of pieces since the last piece of mine but uh, the last instrumental piece that we played was a piece of mine called find a way and this next one we're gonna play I was thinking about what it means to forgive and how to do that because <laughs> it's complicated <laughs> and uh, uh, it occurred to me that 
kind of starts with yourself, like forgiving yourself um, before you can forgive anyone else. So with that in mind, uh, this piece is called Forgive Embrace.
Thanks so much, everyone. Pleasure to be here with you tonight. And we want to welcome all of you, all of our, our friends and our new friends, everyone for being here tonight. I want to say hello to these amazing musicians. First of all, help me welcome Alan Mednard on the drums. And our amazing song leaders tonight, this is Catherine Russell. And Melissa Stiliani. And we had a very special treat, those of you that were here earlier in the service and during our psalm. And we might even get to squeeze another tune out of him. This is the great Gene Bertoncini on guitar. And uh, I want to say a special thanks. This whole month we've had the pleasure and honor of having an amazing person, a musician with us in residence. And can you help me welcome Chris Dingman on Bible Phone. We've had the opportunity to send love to Chris's family, some of whom are here today and some of whom are with us um, over the airwaves. And we just want to send our love to, to Joe and Carolyn and everyone and let them know we're thinking about them. And uh, this Chris's music is so heartfelt and so powerful. It's, it's so amazing to be able to play with him in this space. And we're so grateful for what he brings to us. So thanks again, Chris. <laughs> Trying to make them cry. I gotta think of something else. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna play one more of so Chris's songs, and then actually one more at the at the very end after the blessing. We have a way of sneaking these songs in after the blessing. That's our, we, we should start putting that in the bulletin, I think. <laughs> but we're gonna finish up with a couple of Chris's pieces. And um, is there anything you want to say about this, Chris? Yeah. First, I want to say there's a special guy playing bass. His name's Ike Sturm. <laughs> and I, I want to thank Ike, too, for um, allowing me to play house here while I bring all my various projects in and tinker with them in here. It's really uh, quite an honor and a privilege to get to do, so thank you, Ike. Um, this next piece we're going to play is a piece inspired by one of my favorite, I, would, I was going to say singers, but I really don't, I can't think of her as just a singer. She's an amazing powerhouse of a, of a person and a uh, force, uh, and she's from Mali, and her name is Umu Sangare. Yes. <laughs> Somebody knows her. <laughs> so if you haven't heard her music, I'll spell it out, I'll write it out for you afterwards. Just come up, I'll write it down. Umu Sangre, everyone's always asking me, how do you spell that? But anyway, it starts with an O. Um, <laughs> uh, but this piece is dedicated to her and inspired by her, and it's called Goddess. I'm so focused on the music, I almost forgot. All right, they're such an incredible gift today, and we have this crazy combination. I introduced Kat and Melissa, and I have to do introduce another Kat and Melissa that we have with us today. Our, our incredible dancers. Would you please help me welcome Mrs. Kat Mersek? And Melissa Wu. a gift to have them improvising with us. Um, this is not something that you see often in, in, with dancers. Everything is very choreographed often, and they spend time working through the music and listening to Chris's music, but then also have the ability to adjust in the moment as we are. Um, it's really a gift, so thank you so much for being with us. Here's Goddess.
invite you to stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, who brings light and life to the whole world, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. much. This last piece we're going to play is called Inner Child. And uh, sorry, that was kind of a psych out of a blessing. <laughs> sorry, Jared. <laughs> Keep doing this to him. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be blessed. We always need them. All right. So, so this, beat, this last piece is called Inner Child. And uh, this re music's been recorded, and uh, it'll be released at some point, hopefully soon. Uh, the sooner the better, right? And uh, if you're interested in hearing about that, um, just feel free to come up to me. I have an email list. I keep people posted about things like that and shows and other projects. So thanks again for being here, and have a great week, and I hope you enjoy the music. Thanks.